Good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inget Serious Talk. Today, our guest is an old friend who never gets old, Dimitris Primalis. Dimitris holds an MA in education and has been teaching English for more than 30 years. I know he looks very, very young, but this is his biodata. He is a Microsoft Innovative Educator Fellow and trains teachers on introducing and applying innovation in their daily teaching practice. Dimitris is the EFL Primary and Kindergarten Coordinator at Duca School, Athens, Greece. The title of his talk this evening is Easy to Do AI Activities for Your English Class. Thank you, my dear friend, dear Dimitris, for being with us and welcome again. The screen is all yours. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Good evening, everybody. Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> um, let me tell you that, that um, artificial intelligence has been, it's been there for many, many years. I mean, we use it. The traffic lights are controlled by uh, artificial intelligence, uh, air traffic control. Um, it's been there. It's just that now that it has um, been applied to many, many fields. And one of these fields is teaching. Uh, I'm inundated every day with new tools, new uh, applications um, powered by artificial intelligence. So I'm going to share some things that I've tried with my students. Um, feel free to comment. Um, this is not going to be a, a lecture. This is going to be a workshop. So feel free to share your ideas in the chat box. We're a group of teachers and friends, and we're exploring the potential of artificial intelligence. Well, just a tad, a bit of it. OK, so um, let me start. Um, you're going to watch a video. I want you to watch the video and I would like you to write in the chat box, if you can, um, what the gentleman has for his diet. Uh, okay, so I want you to watch the video and tell me what this gentleman has for his diet. Hi, I am Noah. In June, I weighed 150 kilos and I was desperate to be fit again. Then I decided to follow a new diet, cough with baklava and Donner for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After three weeks, I began to lose weight. Okay. Now, three months later, I have lost 60 kilos and I am as fit as a fiddle. Follow the Donner diet. Okay, does anybody remember his name? I can see that in the chat box. Well. Hi, I am Noah. In June, I weighed 150 kilos and I was desperate to be fit again. Then I decided to follow a new diet, cough with baklava and Donner for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After three weeks, I began to lose weight. Now, three months later, I have lost 60 kilos and I am as fit as a fiddle. Follow the Donner diet. Okay, now this this is not very good. Yes, that's not <laughs> yes. Uh, I love that. And what did he have um, as a diet? Baklava and donor donor diet. Very interesting. Now two questions: uh, Is Noah's English good? Not bad. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Gyro diet. Yes, you heard very well. Okay. Now, would you follow his diet? Would you follow his diet? Okay. Right. Absolutely not. Okay. Well, you've got two very good reasons not to follow his diet. One, because obviously um, <laughs> Donner and Kifte and Baklava, they're, they're fantastic, they're tasty, but they're, well, they're rich in calories. 
So obviously, if you want to go on a diet, you wouldn't do that. And secondly, because Noah is not a real person. Hi. I okay. I created him. He's an avatar. He's a speaking avatar. I um, I visited Veed. It's in the previous slide that you saw there. That's an application that allows you to convert text to speech. Now, what's very interesting is that it allows you to create avatars. So what you, um, uh, what you need to do is sign up there. It's free. Of course, it's got its professional part uh, where you have to pay for that. But it allows you to create um, a certain amount of, of minutes every month. So that was from my, um, the, my, the free part, I, and I didn't have to pay for that. Now, once you sign up, you will find yourself in front of this dashboard. So you decide the character that you would like to appear on your short video, and you decide what kind of English this person speaks. Noah supposedly speaks uh, British English. There, there's American English, um, South African English, Australian English. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think you can also um, have them speak in other languages. But because I was interested in English, I focused on that. Then what you do is right below it, you can't see it on the screen, there is a box where you type what you would like the avatar to um, talk about. And then you listen to it. It takes a couple of minutes. You press the uh, play button. You can hear the person and you can even decide uh, on the um, um, on how fast this person might talk. Now, once this is done, you press the done button and you can download it, which is what I've done. Now, why would someone want to use an avatar in his or her English class? I'm sure you can come up with nice ideas. Do you, would you like to write in the in the chat box? I can see that very very clearly. Why would someone be tempted to, to create an avatar and use it in their class? And if so, why would they do that? To make the class more interesting. Yes, well done, Ida. That's right. More enjoyable. To show different accents. Excellent, Desky. Yes. Obviously, Noah's English is much, much better than mine. Um, I'm 54 years old. Also, when I learned English, it was quite different. Real life context, very good. Make the class familiar with other accents. It's good for shy people to lower anxiety levels of students, to activate the student schemata, tap into diversity. Wow, you're an amazing group. Yes, for all these reasons. Now, I want you to think, close your eyes for a, a while, I done is right, maybe as a model with a non-existent native speaker. And most of them are good and they're becoming better and better. Now, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you asked your students to create content and write the script of the avatar. What kind of skills would you have, um, would you have them practicing in class? If you ask them to write the script and show them how to create the avatar. In fact, I think they will show you how to create the avatar because most of them are tech savvy. What kind of skills would you help your students practice if you ask them to do this activity? Okay, maybe my internet's a bit slow, so we'll, okay. An avatar uh, as your best friend. That's a very nice idea. Writing, micro skills, vocabulary and grammar, listening, very good, yes. Exactly. And if you ask two students to work together to produce an avatar, uh, that means that they can benefit mutually from their knowledge. So that's uh, one short activity, very easy to do. Um, you are the teacher, so you can easily sign up uh, you can engage them in the lesson. That's right. And you can teach anything you want. Or you can have them create their own content.
You can even discuss it in class. Uh, you can share short videos. I used it last week at a workshop to introduce grammar. Um, have you ever gone, have you ever tried bungee jumping? Yes, I have, no, I haven't. Uh, and I tried that with um, um, this girl. It worked very well. Intonation, emphasis, very good. Um, use, write a text and use personality adjectives and come up with your own avatar. And it just keeps um, becoming better and better. Now, some of these um, avatar uh, creators allow you to take a photo and um, have the person in the photo speaking. Now, the photo could be a historical figure. So you could have, for example, Socrates explaining his philosophy, or it could be um, uh, it could be any other person that you are doing in your course book, and you would like to ask the students the the name of the it's it's Vid, um, or you might find it as Vid AI. So you can ask your students to be creative, and at the same time, they are the ones who are creating content. Now, that's the first issue. Um, the second thing is, was this video um, real or fake? Obviously, it was fake. There's no way that, that you can follow a diet lose 60 kilos and keep eating uh, baklava and uh, um, donor and kofte <laughs> for crying out loud. The problem though is that in this world, um, exactly, anybody can use that to create their own content. And well, since we're talking about um, what's happening in this world, I would like to share the latest news with you. Did you hear that Bill Gates, Elon Musk, uh, and Jeff Bezos, um, you know, they're billionaires because of, um, of um, IT technology. Um, have you heard what happened to them? They all went bankrupt. Yes. Well, if you don't believe me, there they are. And they had to go back and um, working as waiters and as laborers. I can see Shil, who's laughing, and Nurkan, and <laughs> I think everybody's laughing. That's fake, exactly. That's fake. Uh, but uh, if you surf the internet and you type deep faking images, uh, there is technology now. They, they look very realistic. And obviously, there's a lot of, of room in your class um, to use these kind of photos, um, <laughs> I, I tried, yes. Actually, that, that, that wasn't created by me. That I found that on the internet. Um, but you can easily use that in your class. So what I'd like you to do, because you've had enough with me speaking, I want you to look at the, this photo. I found it on, on Facebook through Ron Maureen. Um, there we go. I want you to, um, first of all, saying if you know the people uh, in the photo, I know they seem very familiar. Let me give you a, a clue. Look at the back. I think the painting looks very familiar. And I want to tell you that this photo was taken in Florence in 1504. Great, yes, that's Leonardo and Mona Lisa. That's right. And at the back, you can see um, the painting, Mona Lisa. Hmm. Now, I found that on the internet through um, Ron Maureen. Yes. <laughs> um, Sibel, you're absolutely right. To you and me, this is fake. To a 15-year-old who was born having that uh, from the first months of, of his or her life, um, well, this might not be fake. So I would like to see your ideas here. And, and I would like you to write, you know, in a line or two, how you would use photos like this one in your class. 
what kind of activities would you um, do with them? So that one, they, they can speak English and two, they can develop skills, language skills like um, writing, reading, listening and speaking. Or maybe even their research skills and their critical thinking skills. Vocabulary, warm up for reading, very nice. Well done, I son. As a warm up, mm -hmm. guessing who they are, what kind of relationship they had, very good. And, and, and I'm building on what Aidan has just mentioned. How will they find out what kind of relationship they had, who they are? What do they have to use? The internet. Story creating. Yes, that's a great idea. What happened before and what will happen after? That's right. Or you can simply invite them to, to um, challenge them, to, to um, tell you why this picture is not authentic, which means that they have to start thinking about when cameras and photos were invented. Um, who they were, as you have correctly pointed out. Uh, try to do cross-checking. Uh, learn to rely not only on one source, but, but try and search for more sources. And of course, you can have uh, collaboration skills because you can ask them to work in pairs or in groups and then present their findings to the rest of the class. So this is a very nice activity whichever um, you can practice the third conditionals very good that's a great idea um, i'm thrilled you have such creative ideas so depending on what your focus is you can use these um, um, uh, these um, deep faking images uh, to the benefit of your class and mind you because your your students are usually tech savvy most of the times they can create their own. So you can challenge them and ask them to present the photo and maybe bluff their way. Present the photo, present the story, as you have correctly pointed out, and then invite the class to tell them if this is fake or real, with or without using the internet. Conditionals, very good. Fantastic getting new ideas, well done. So here's a brief overview of what we're gonna see today. You have just seen some activities that facilitate writing, speaking, reading, listening, some research skills, basic research skills, critical thinking and creative thinking. Um, all right, I know you've had enough with, with images and pictures, we'll come back and I wanna show you a couple of activities more, but right now, I am challenging you. I know that you want to express your views and your ideas. And in a traditional class, um, at least here in Greece, uh, students wouldn't talk. Or you might have students and you, but because they don't know how to work in pairs or in groups, most teachers feel that they, they can't really help them with that. Sometimes we organize debates, but you know the Mediterranean temperament, you know. <laughs> right. Um, but I think we should have a debate because I love debates. I think everybody loves debates. And let's see if I can share my screen now. Uh, and yes, we can have a mini debate. Mm, if my computer decides to work, yes, it does. So I can share my screen. Okay, right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to debateai.org. Are you ready for the challenge? All right. Um, I would like uh, a topic from the audience. What would you like the, the topic of the debate to be about? Preferably, because you are the teachers, I would focus on on something that you've done. I mean, if you've taught them about the environment, it would be a good idea to challenge them uh, about the environment. This is this is good for um, um, advanced classes. Uh, I've tried that with advanced classes and it works fine. 
Okay, any ideas about um, a debate, about the topic of the debate? All right. Uh -huh. Is technology... All right, let's specify that. Is technology uh, art schools? All right, then let's make it a bit more formal, beneficial or harmful to the students. Okay, so let's go next and see what happens. Uh, who would you like to engage in a debate? You can invite a famous person. Um, here are some examples. Shall we invite Elon Musk? No, I think we all agree. If somebody knows about technology, he's the one. Okay. Right, maybe later. And let's see if we can work. Yep, there we go. So it has created debating technology in schools, beneficial or harmful with Elon Musk. All right. Now, <laughs> yes. She's got bananas lately. It's true. Now, yes, of course you can. Of course you can. And I'll tell you about what happened when I, I invited um, uh, a former president of the United States. Uh, but right now, I want to hear your arguments. What do you think? I want to see your responses. So I want you to um, write a response here. In other words, your opinion. Uh not really, but it uh, we don't we can't make him choose sides, but depending on our um, response, it responds accordingly. So I would like to hear um, an argument in favor or against uh, technology in schools. Okay, so all right. Okay, so. There we go. I'll just pick the first answer. I'll copy and paste it here. All right. But because we, of course, we have to be um, a bit more formal. So let's say that it's mainly beneficial since it offers excellence. Okay. It is an excellent source of materials. Okay, therefore, students are highly likely to benefit uh, from accessing these resources, which makes sense. Okay, let's see now what's going to answer. Um, What's very interesting is that it gives um, you can either uh, ask um, the AI tool itself to respond for you, or you can respond. Now, let's see what it responded. While it's true that technology can provide access to a wide range of educational materials, it's important to consider the potential downsides. The over-reliance on technology in schools can lead to a, decreased, a decrease in critical thinking skills and creativity among students. It can also contribute to a lack of face-to-face -face interaction and social skills development. It's crucial for students to have a balance between using technology and engaging in traditional educational methods to foster a well-rounded learning experience. What about the level of language used there? And of course, I, you could reply and then it can go on and on and on. That's right, and it, it is an argumentative essay in, in a way, it's true. But at least the problem that I have with my advanced learners is that uh, usually they lack um, a wide range of vocabulary or the vocabulary they use is not academic because most of them are 16 or 17 year old kids and they're, they are likely to use jargon. Uh, with this tool, you can... Um, expose them to some good language and of course there's always a challenge so this is debateai.org okay now since we're talking about students 
uh, and having problems with um, the register. Here is another very interesting tool. You can write it a text and um, you can ask it to transcribe it, to transform it into different degrees of formality. All right, for instance, let's see. Yo, bro, what's up? Not in the mood today for English lessons. Um, how would you use this tool? What I've written there is is uh, uh, well, a few lines written uh, obviously in a very informal register. The way I've used it with my class is I can copy and paste a text, challenge them to turn that into a more formal or a casual or academic um, style. And then exactly as Defne says, to show the students the differences in register. Let's see if we can get it in an academic register. You click the button. Ah, greetings, friends. Unfortunately, I'm not feeling inclined towards learning English today. Or we can make it more casual. Or informal. Which is the same, or we can make it formal. Here, because of the, the sample is not very um, long, uh, it, 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 it just doesn't produce uh, much variety. But if you had longer texts, uh, then it's, it's, it's good fun to see the different degrees of formality, the different uh, um, 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 degrees of register. Uh, and, and when it comes to um, um, young people, uh, they usually love that. One more tool, and then we can go back to um, images. Uh, just a minute. All right. Now, very often, um, students are bored to read long texts. Now, this is a tool called Recast. Let's Recast. Um, what you can do with that is you can add it as an extension. I don't know if you can see um, the top of my screen. And then you can mark a text, click on the extent extension, and let's see what it can do. Here is a text. This is a recast of the 1200 word piece. Influencing can be a high earning career. There we go. Why did we take it seriously? From BBC. This article explores. Okay. Here's the article. And here's the link to the article. I found this article about influencers. Um, kids love influencers and they know what the whole thing is about. But the article is quite long. It's 1,200 words. And most of the teenagers that I teach are far too bored to do that. And when it, when it comes to um, taking um, academic exams or higher level exams, students need to um, summarize. So here was the challenge for them. I just clicked here. I had added recast as an extension. If you click there, it takes about 10 minutes. So you need to do that at home. And it creates um, a recast. In other words, it takes the test, uh, sorry, the text, and it summarizes it, turning it into something like a podcast. Now, because most students are familiar with podcasts, they love that. Let's get an idea of, of what happened, how um, it produces that. The challenge for the students is to come up with a road summary and then compare their summary with a summary produced by Recast. The changing perception of influencers 
and how their careers are being taken more seriously, highlighting the success and entrepreneurial nature of influencers. Now, it always gives a summary, which is very interesting. It just um, helps students be acquainted with the idea of summary. Believe it or not, most of them are not very familiar. And then uh, it moves on to the different points in the text. Let's listen in. Today, we're talking about the changing perception of influencers and how their careers are being taken more seriously. The article introduces us to Chloe Holman, a professional influencer who has faced skepticism about her job. Holman talks about how at the start of her content creating journey, people didn't understand what she was doing. They thought it was just about taking pictures and posting them. Even her own mom was worried about her putting her whole life online. But now things have changed. Holman has found success as an influencer, specializing in providing curly hair tips and tutorials. She even runs her social media platforms as a business with a staff of six and has launched her own hair accessory line. It's not just Holman who has seen a shift in perception. Vicky Segar. Okay. Uh, yes, this is free. Uh, there, there's, of course, the, the Raycast Pro. But uh, I've used it twice with my students. One was an article about um, uh, people who um, rose up against the... Uh, um, uh, the people who had occupied beaches with um, chairs and umbrellas, and they had to pay for that, uh, which was obviously something that they knew about. The other one it was about the influencers. Um, it's free. You can see the, the, the reading time and the average time of the listening. It provides very good listening practice, one. Two, students can compare um, their summary skills with the summary skills of the um of the AI tool. Um, and the good thing is that it's re it paraphrases and it uses a very high level of vocabulary when it comes to um, um, summarizing the text. It's a very interesting tool. It's called Let's Recast. Um, it's free. You just sign up. Of course, you know, if, if you try the pro version, you, you pay for that. There are more services. But to be honest, so far I've used it and I was very happy with the um, um, free of charge version. Now, I know you've had enough with tools and everything. Uh, so let's go back and let's play again with images. Now, why images? Because our students are bored with images, they love images, they, they feel um, very comfortable with them. Right, can you recognize the person in the picture? Exactly, yes, yes, it's me, that's right. <laughs> Well, maybe in my previous life, without wearing glasses. Okay. Now, this is my own personal avatar. Uh, I will tell you later on about the uh, application that I used and, and how the whole thing worked. Uh, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, it's so realistic. Um, this one, obviously, not very realistic, but most of them, and I'll show you samples, are quite realistic. Now, as I was playing this summer with um, this tool, I was just, um, can I use that with my students? Because my students love avatars. They use avatars in Snapchat. They use avatars uh, on their social media. So obviously, it's something that, that would stimulate their interest. Now, the first thing that I thought about, um, about, using it is that if I saw myself in the shoes of somebody else, then obviously I would try to think of the story behind the picture. So um, I, I wrote a few lines. If my computer decides to cooperate. Okay, there we go. Come on computer. Okay, it's not very clear. He woke up by the sound of drums, while the earth below him was shaking, as if thousands of people were marching towards his room. 
The room was decorated with elaborate ornaments and frescoes of mythical beasts, half animals, half humans, with strange inscriptions in a language that you could not decipher. The scent of exotic fruit and the heat of the rising sun made him wonder where he was. So how would you use that in class? I would ask them to write uh, a short story and then I would ask the class to continue the story. But what struck me though, uh, was that some people are not very much into reading. So they wouldn't be interested in reading. So here's what I did. I used another tool, but basically you, you can even use if you want to uh, a simple word, a Microsoft um, word, and uh, more or less like the way I did with Veed, I and I'll show you how I did it. I had two versions of avatars narrating my story. I apologize about the the quality of the recording; it's not very uh, high, but I think you can all listen to it. So I chose two samples. He woke up by the sound of drums while the earth below him was shaking as if thousands of people were marching towards his room. The room was decorated with elaborate ornaments and frescoes of mythical beasts, half animals, half humans, with strange inscriptions in a language that he could not decipher. The scent of exotic fruit and the heat of the rising sun made him wonder where he was. So that was one accent. Um, I wasn't very happy because I thought it was far too slow. It didn't sound very natural. I can't remember if I asked for Scottish English. I don't think so. Uh, I was happier with a second one. Let's see if we can make it play. He woke up by the sound of drums while the earth below him was shaking as if thousands of people were marching towards his room. The room was decorated with elaborate ornaments and frescoes of mythical beasts, half animals, half humans, with strange inscriptions in a language that he could not decipher. The scent of exotic fruit and the heat of the... Now, this one sounded more natural, or at least maybe it was my impression. Um, so I used for the listening text, uh, a, 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 a tool called Speedify, uh, which is free up to a point. Uh, you're given a seven day free trial. And after that, they, they will charge you. Now, be careful with the free trials because very often we missed, um, deadlines. Yeah, they do send you an email but we tend to forget, and then the, the credit card is charged. So even though it's they're usually free, they ask for your um, um, credit card number. And the other one was created with Lenser. Uh, I paid one euro and 37, one euro and 40 cents, um, which wasn't much. And it's, uh, it asked me to... Um, upload 10 of my uh, uh, photos from my mobile phone. I'll show you later how uh, this is done. And it created 50 avatars. This is what Speedify looks like. Okay. Which sounds interesting. I mean, having Gwyneth Paltrow narrating your story. Um, there's the menu. You can convert text to speech. You can have an AI voice studio, uh, or you can actually um, upload PDFs and it can read them, which is interesting because in a way you can create audiobooks. I chose the text speech reader. Uh, this is the menu. It worked more or less like Veed. I chose the voice. Um, Unfortunately, with a speaking tone, there was none, which was a disappointment. Maybe the pro version, 
maybe uh, something more advanced. But in the basic part, I, I couldn't choose more. Um, I chose the speed. I had the text and then it created it. In the free version, I could not download it as an MP3 file. But all right, I, I found other ways to record it. Still, it's quite an interesting um, tool if you want to use it. And these are some of the uh, photos that um, the avatars that Lenza created. I received 50 and uh, they're divided in different themes. Uh, one of them was Traveler, uh, the other one was uh, uh, Imperial, the other one was Ancient Egypt, Knights, Vikings, uh, Drawing. Some of it, some of them are, are really successful and they're very realistic. Uh, and another one that I liked was Cartoon. My daughter liked it very much. Some of them are not very good though. However, for um, the money you pay, um, most of the avatars you get, they're okay. Um, your students might be better informed than I am. Uh, they know many, many, many uh, applications that, that uh, they can use to create their own avatars. Now, be careful because there's a catch there. At least in Greece and in many European countries, there is the um, there are GDPR uh, limitations. In other words, if you want to use um, a kid's um, photo, you need to have written consent from the parents. Otherwise, you can be in big trouble. Um, so please make sure that if you ask your students to do something similar and they want to use their, um, their own avatars and write about them, create videos um, about them, tell their stories, if you are to share them, make sure it's the same, yes, yes. Um, more or less, it's, it's universal. Uh, please make sure that you have the written consent. Some of these stories are remarkable, and I'm sure that you would like to share them uh, with the rest of the school or uh, maybe with um, the um, student and the educator community, but please make sure that you have written consent from the parents. But it's good fun, I can tell you. I had good fun, um, and I discovered many hidden sides of my myself or things that I would have liked to do, but I never got around to doing them. Okay, and since we're talking about pictures and images, uh, I tried to um, I tried to create an image. This is from Bing Image Creator, uh, which uses Dali. Um, you're gonna see that later on 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 uh, a slide. I tried to create some imaginative uh, pictures. So this is what I came up with. Create a colorful image with pupils who are playing with robots in a classroom. What I really liked was that AI itself gave me this suggestion. Now, what's the difference between my suggestion and the suggestion um, by AI? Create a colorful image of pupils playing with robots in a classroom, use bright colors and play full imagery to capture the fun and excitement of learning with robots. So one, uh, my description was rather poor in terms in linguistic terms. Um, two, uh, there were certain things lacking. For example, I didn't define, it was very short, I didn't define uh, the mood. Now, I know that this sounds like your students. When you ask them to write a paragraph, they're usually very short. They write very, they very briefly what they want without getting into detail. And in a way, prompt engineering, prompt engineering is when you create a prompt for AI, is writing activity. This is, by the way, what it came up uh, with. Um, and to, to a certain extent, I was happy, but AI was right. I should have been much more specific if I wanted something more specific. So um, I did some research and I found some, some amazing articles. And here is a summary of the um, 
the, the points that the effective prompt should have. I want you to, we're going to read them together, and I want you to think if there were any resemblance to what we do with our English classes, or in other words, if we use any of them to teach English. So the prompts that the students or you want to um, use, uh, when you write a text and you give instructions to artificial intelligence to create either text or um, image or um, 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 a sound, um, you need to, to provide a content, of course, context, where is this used or where is this, um, um, where was this, pic this picture taken in? The tone, whether it's humorous, whether it's academic, serious, formal, informal. If we're talking about photo, uh, sorry, image, then um, you need to add the aesthetics. It's going to be cartoon-like, it's going to be realistic, it's going to be science fiction. And give examples. Now, I'm sorry, please uh, unmute yourself. Yep, yep, no worries about Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Um, no worries about it. Um, it's a live one. So, um, do we use any of these in in um in our classes when we want to teach our, our students to write of course we do we ask them to provide content we ask them to provide context um the the higher the level we ask them to be more specific in tone okay aesthetics uh, that hasn't got to do with writing um but we also ask them to give examples so now we're going to play a game. I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I asked Dali. Um, I gave some instructions. I gave, the, the, I gave it a prompt. And I asked to produce this picture, this image. Now I want you to have a careful look at the image. And then I want you to write in the chat box the description that you would give to Dali. Dali is an image creator AI tool, um, and it powers um, being image creator as well. There are many out there. It's just that I've been using these two. That's why I keep uh, mentioning them. Um, I want you to write the description you would give to the image creator to create uh, an image like this one. Let's see how close you can get. Remember, and I will take you back, you need to provide content, context, where in other words, tone. I, I would say put feelings there instead of tone, the aesthetics. And if you want, you can provide examples. So there's the image. And I would like you to write in the chat uh what description you would give to Dali to produce this picture or a picture that that resembles this one the closest it can get and I'm giving you a hard time but that will help you use your linguistic resources what kind of description would you give and you you can use that with any level of students you have. Young level, young learners, intermediate, advanced. Okay, we've got one here, a stork and tuxedo on the left. Okay, I'm copying that. Let me um, go to Dali. Just give me a second. Let me go to Dali and see what happens. All right. I created that with Dali. Uh, there we go. Share. Okay. Login. 
Dali was created by OpenAI, the same one that has created ChatGPT, and okay, let's see if we can make it work. I just copied and pasting now a random answer, one from the the chat box. Let's see what's gonna generate. While waiting, while um, the, the image is being processed, it gives you tips. And, aha, uh -huh, interesting. A stock in tuxedo on the left. Hmm. I think there's something missing there. Let's get another one. Create an arrogant white stork with glasses wearing a tuxedo jacket in cartoons. All right, let's see what we can get. It's cooking, cooking, cooking. Ta da! Very interesting. Now, what I really liked about these tools is that if I don't like it, I can ask, first of all, I can download it if I want to, and I can ask for variations. So it can come up with, with uh, variations and I can decide which one I want to keep. And as you can see on the right, I've been playing with that um, quite a lot. It just, it takes some time. I think it's getting better and better. Where would you use these pictures with your students? Yes, I agree with Ali. Yes, uh, it's 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 quite engaging. Um, when teaching descriptive language, that's right. Very good. Make them write descriptions to find the given picture. So, um, if if you have taught them descriptive adjectives, uh, here's the. the the a, a nice activity and of course you can ask them to um create their own stories and illustrate them they don't have to go to an illustrator now uh because basically um it's quite easy they can create their own images and because i was never very talented um i was i wasn't would never very good at drawing i always had issues with that Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Let's see some more, some of the activities. Okay, so you can practice vocabulary, as you've said. Emotions, expressions, write your story and illustrate it. Create a class art exhibition. Uh, ask students to create a short video explaining what they want to convey with their work of art and how they felt about it. They don't have to create the work themselves. They just need to describe it and then talk about their feelings. And in fact, you can create uh, even a small museum, uh, a virtual museum uh, with these videos and these works of art. Create avatars and be interviewed by another student. We saw that earlier. Which tools um, have I used? Bing, Image Creator, DALI. To be honest, I, I didn't use Midjourney. I know Midjourney produces fantastic um, pictures, which look very real, but it was a bit too complicated for me. Hopefully, in the near future, I'll spend more time with that and Lenza. I know we don't have much time, so uh, let's move on to some more ideas if you want to use AI. Uh, this is what happened this summer. Um, teachers who wanted to apply for um, the title of Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert had to look at, had to answer certain questions. Now, some of them were committed, some others, they just copied and pasted what ChatGPT had answered. So, describe how you leverage Microsoft tools to increase accessibility. Now, as an AI language model, I don't have a physical classroom, but I can certainly provide information. So, to your students who believe that they can um, 
cheat using ChatGPT. This is a very good example of what thing of how things can go wrong. And of course, you need to remember that it's it was teachers who did that, educators. It wasn't students. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you for tonight is um, I had a student um, who had learning difficulties, and I I I used a a, a, a a sentence generator to give it as a prompt to her. The prompt was Maria was walking um, at the airport when she stumbled upon something hard. And then she had to continue the story. She wrote the first paragraph. And then I thought, do you feel like creating a video with that? So I used Lumen, which is a free, another free AI video, uh, video maker. And we opened it with her. Her name is Cleopatra. Well, we wrote the first one. We wrote the first lines. She continued writing and she produced a short video. Let's watch the video. Now, some words, we worked on them together. For example, the word culprit. But the mystery deepens wasn't mine, wasn't Cleopatra's. Um, basically, it was given by Lumen, um, the uh, AI video maker. The good thing about using an AI video maker is that you type something and then the, the student can choose photos or the, they, they can choose short videos. And they can choose the music as well. Um, and of course, an upgraded version of what they write. Not necessarily always, but um, sometimes it was really nice. Um, and finally, the, we created this, this short video, which was very interesting. She was really proud and she showed her mom. Mom, mom, look what we've done. Um, and then I said, that's very nice as a, as a teaser, as a, as a trailer. But what if somebody wants to find out more about the story? And she said, yes, yeah, you're right. So I said, for next time, when I come to your house, is it okay if we, um, if you can write the next part of the story? Now, remember that Cleopatra has um, um, quite serious learning difficulties and writing is not her cup of tea. Now, let's see what she produced. So it was the previous page that you saw. There was a paragraph. And then there was this page. And this page. And this page. And of course, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. Because I never expected Cleopatra to produce such a lengthy text. There were a few mistakes. But who cares about the, the few mistakes? She came up with a very interesting story. She loved it. She felt very proud. And exactly, it was impressive. And I, I, I swear, I didn't do it. It was the motivation, the fact that she felt creative. And because she felt creative and she could share her creativity with other people, then obviously, uh, that's why she produced things. And of course, her sister was jealous. And she even asked for another video. So there was another video. We don't have much time to see that. Uh, very, very quickly, there are other online tools, just like Punchline AI. You write a punchline and they can continue the, uh, the joke. They usually provide three um, versions. 
But to be honest, your students have a better sense of humor. I'm sure they can come up with something better. But it's it's this this competition between AI that makes students become more creative. Um, I won't keep you for much longer. Uh, this is. There are lots of um, um, things one could talk for hours about it. Um, I'll just go to the last slide because the question is, should we use AI, yes or no? Um, the educational community is divided. Some people say, no, don't touch it. Some others say, yes, you can introduce it, but try to set um, some rules and encourage learners to quote, to, uh, sorry, to quote AI tools. Um, time will tell, but um, I couldn't resist seeing this one. I saw it, this is an ad. Hey, ChatGPT, finish this building. Can ChatGPT finish this building? No. No matter what happens, your skills, the teacher skills are irreplaceable. Artificial intelligence is there to help you motivate your learners, engage them, um, provide some extra practice for people who need it, either because they are very strong students or um, students who want to take their own time, that they um, have some special learning needs, and AI can accommodate that. No matter what happens, though, just remember that you're irreplaceable. Your students will always need you to be there on their side and use artificial intelligence prudently and wisely so as to support your students and empower them to learn more. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if it, you would like to ask questions. We could, we could be talking about AI for hours. <laughs> Thank you very much. What an informative and beneficial session we had. Uh, thanks from the bottom of my heart. I, I didn't even realize that uh, it was a little bit over our time limit, but it was so interesting. Uh, so, guys, I know that you have also benefited from this talk. And don't forget that the video is going to be published next week on our Inge Turkey channel. So if you have missed anything, you can watch it. You can um, recommend it to your colleagues. If you have any comments or questions, please raise your hand. Or if the device that you use is not appropriate to suitable to ask the question, you can write it in the chat box. Um, that there's a question, how old is the student? Uh, she just finished primary school. She wrote that sometime in late May. Um, 11 or 12 years old. I, I think you could say that she's 12. Yeah. Um, but, but what made me really happy was the fact that she was not the, the, the kind of girl who would write more than a paragraph. And yeah. when we say paragraph, we, we just mean two, three lines. That's it. And I can understand that it wasn't very pleasant for her, but it, it motivated her. Uh, and above all, because AI finds the, the, the necessary resources, you have students focusing on the content. And not in the past, my students would spend hours trying to find nice pictures, nice visuals uh, for, the, for their projects. Now this can be done in, in, in a fraction of seconds. Uh, you mentioned that uh, she had a kind of uh, uh, learning difficulty. Learning yes. difficulty. Yes. So, did you have to deal with her individually? Uh, yes, it was a, a private lesson. I was hired by her parents. Her okay. sister um, also has some learning difficulties. I see. Um, okay. But it, it it worked fine because she felt that she could share her work. Well, we shared it with her mom. Her mom, her dad, and her sister. And then her sister asked to uh, produce a video as well. Success is always the best motivator in the world. I mean, I don't know anyone who gets motivated by failure, 
when a child succeeds something, of course, the child wants to do more, to accomplish more. But sometimes in a crowded classroom, I believe as a teacher, we neglect some of these kids. Uh, and maybe that's why they have learning problems, difficulties. It's It doesn't come with the child, maybe. Maybe it comes with the system. The, uh, the conditions, uh, I don't know. Uh, Sibelo Jam says, uh, Dimitri, if you can see the chat box. Several AI uh, Sibelo Jam has a question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's not a matter of, of, of buying uh, an expensive uh, AI tool. I think it's it's got to do with what your goals are. In other words, if if you want to stimulate interest, um, I wouldn't use more than two or three tools every year. Um, it it depends on what you want to do. You can create the same. Um, um, you can stimulate um, um, interest with your class either by using a free version of, of creating an avatar, or very often you can ask your students to produce avatar. Uh, that's an example. If I were in your shoes because we're all teachers, uh, I don't think that most of us are being paid a, a hefty salary. So hold your courses, do not spend um, a large amounts of money on buying these apps. If your institution, the, the, the school that you're working at, feels that they would like to invest in something, um, which means that they, they, can, they can control it, they, they can make sure that it's safe, then probably recommend one or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, 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 I would say that try and use, even from the, the free samples given, something that, that would engage learners. Yeah. yeah. I believe and, private and, schools and another do point, uh, if I invest may. a lot of money. Um, yes. And, and another point, if I may, um, it, it also has to do with how students use it. Mm -hmm. um, because they might use it just to, to have fun um, looking at themselves on how they look different. They do that anyway. They just keep scrolling. I've seen this summer teenagers who kept scrolling for hours and hours. Yeah. Or they can use that to, to, to create language, to create content. Yeah. But because there is a need for young people to create content, for example, they, they create those TikTok videos. Mm. If you can give them a goal and make sure that the content is a bit more educational, then obviously they will benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I cannot see any other questions or remarks in the chat box. Um, uh, do you want me to wait for a while or I guess everything was so clear. I don't know, but if you have any, any remarks, any comments that you would like to make, you're more than welcome. Otherwise, uh, our friend Dimitris, uh, is tired. Maybe we should say good evening, good night and bye-bye <laughs> all together. I don't know. Uh, well, let, I let guess. Me say, it, uh, um. Thank you very much. Lunch. Yes, yes, excellent. Uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Dimitris is very busy, but if I can convince him to hold <laughs> another session, why not? I'll, I'll why be very not? glad to do that. Yeah, I'll be yeah, very glad to you. do that. Of course. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, a, a wonderful colleague, uh, a resourceful person. Uh, we are so proud of you. My uh, dear uh, friend, Dimitris, thanks a lot. Thanks a million. Hopefully we will have you again as our guest speaker uh, and maybe share more uh, practical activities with this wonderful technological miracles, you know. And as usual, thank you very much, my dear colleagues, for being here, for supporting us, for never stopping to learn. Uh, take very good care of yourselves and I hope to see you 
next Friday with another colleague. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Good evening. Bye bye. Bye.